Hi, my name is Chris Brennan, and this is your yearly horoscope forecast for the zodiac sign of Gemini for the entire year ahead of 2022. If you're new to my channel, then my name is Chris Brennan, and I'm the host of the Astrology Podcast and the author of a book on ancient astrology titled Hellenistic Astrology, The Study of Fate and Fortune. So in my approach, I synthesize a little bit of ancient and a little bit of modern astrology in order to get the best of both worlds. So each week I release new podcasts and videos on astrology on my channel, so if you'd like to get notifications when I release a new video, then please hit the subscribe button here on YouTube, and if you enjoy this video, then please consider hitting the like button to show me that you enjoyed the content and you'd like to see more of it. Okay, so my horoscopes are primarily meant to be read relative to your rising sign or your ascendant sign, which are essentially the same things. Although you can also watch them from the perspective of your sun sign, especially if you're born during the day, or your moon sign, especially if you're born at night. So the rising sign changes signs every hour or two during the course of the day, whereas the moon sign takes about two days to change signs, and the sun sign takes about a month to change signs. So as a result of that, the rising sign is much more personally relevant to you, and for that reason, I would really focus on that when you're looking at these horoscopes, or horoscopes in general for that matter. So if you don't know what your rising sign is, then all you need to do is find out your birth time and then go to a website where you can get your birth chart calculated, such as astro.com, and you should be able to get your ascendant or your birth uh, rising sign calculated on those websites. So I have a video tutorial titled How to Calculate Your Ascendant and Rising Sign on my channel, which you can either search for or, or I'll put a link to it in the upper corner of this video right here. So let me know in the comments below what your sun, moon, and rising signs are, and which sign resonates with you more when you watch your video horoscopes like this one. All right, Gemini, let's do this. Let's jump into your transits for 2022. So I want to start off by talking about the Venus retrograde and Capricorn transit in your eighth house of shared resources, other people's money, sometimes it has to do with things like mortality. Um, and generally just that which belongs to others, or sometimes things like inheritance. So a Venus retrograde in this sign can be an okay transit um, depending on if you have a day or night chart. So if you have a night chart, it might be a little bit more positive. It could indicate a sudden windfall of money or some uh, your partner suddenly getting a raise or something like that. If you have a day chart, it might be a little bit less positive of a transit, especially given that Venus stationed retrograde conjunct Pluto in December and will conjoin it a third time in the middle or early part of March. So Venus conjunct Pluto transits can be a little bit tense. It can usually have to do with things like power plays or um, struggles over something. Since we're talking about the eighth house, it could be struggles over money or wealth or things related to that. Um, it may be bringing up some things from the past from you for you or dredging up some difficult things from the past, especially since Venus goes retrograde in this spot of the zodiac every eight years. It could be something from eight years ago or 16 years ago or 24 years ago or so on and so forth, depending on how old you are. But there could be some sort of connection between this time period and what's happening now and the past. So sometimes dredging up the past and sort of dealing with it or confronting it in some way can be one of the major themes. So that's going to be going on through uh, especially January. It speeds up a little bit towards the uh, later part of January when Mars ingresses into Capricorn and brings a little bit more attention to that sign all the way through until early March. Uh, when eventually Mars and Venus depart from Capricorn and sort of complete that transit. So that's the early part of the year, the first three months, basically, two or three months. The next transit I wanted to talk about is Jupiter moving into Pisces, which is your 10th house of career, work, profession, and overall life direction. So this is probably one of the most positive transits that you have coming up this year, because Jupiter is moving into such a prominent spot in your chart. So Jupiter has to do with growth and expansion and things of that nature, as well as uh, the confirmation or affirmation of good things. 
So this could indicate uh, some growth and expansion when it comes to your career and overall life direction, like getting a new job or achieving some career goal that you've had your mind set to for a number of years now. It can also be about starting new beginnings and laying a solid foundation in that area of your life for something that will take you forward many years into the future. So it's generally a pretty good transit. Um, the only thing that's a little bit a little bit tricky is that Jupiter will be conjoining Neptune in early April, and Neptune can sometimes bring um, illusions or some sort of sense of things not being quite what they seem when it comes to this area of your life. So there could be some areas where you want to be a little bit careful to keep yourself somewhat grounded, even though that's not going to be your your tendency, or, or you're going to have a tendency to not want to do that during this time. But uh, you want to be on the eye out, keep an eye out for things that are a little bit too good to be true. Like if somebody offers a job and then later it turns out that it is not what it seemed. So I'm not saying that's a given because you definitely don't want to overlook any potentially great opportunities during this time, but it might just pay off to be a little bit more careful or a little bit more skeptical than you might be inclined to be at first during this transit, especially during early April. But otherwise, it can be a great transit for creative matters and, um, yeah, just cr creativity, philosophy, and integrating themes of um, expansiveness and boundlessness, and even um, inspiration, like philosophical or, or sort of spiritual inspiration, into one's work in a positive or constructive fashion can be a really positive aspect of of such a transit. So. That's one of the more positive ones, I think, for you this year, and that's going to last from the very beginning of 2022 through early May. Um, after that, the next transit I wanted to talk about is that Jupiter is going to move into Aries on May 10th, and Aries is your 11th house of friends and groups and alliances and hopes. So this is going to be a period of growth and expansion when it comes to your uh, friend circle, basically. And this would be a great period when Jupiter moves into Aries to try to make some new friends, to expand the role of groups and activities and social movements in your life, perhaps join a club or join some sort of social network of like-minded individuals. And if you do that, I think you'll find yourself building a lot of really good, uh, productive, and um, supportive connections with the other like-minded individuals over the course of this year, off and on, especially during the second and third quarters of 2022. Um, although this transit will actually come back a little bit in 2023, I believe, because it's not fully over. Yeah, yeah. Jupiter in Aries, December 20th through May 20th, May 2023. So some of this is sort of themes that will get going a little bit this year in the second and third quarters, but will then come back a little bit uh, early next year as well in terms of growth and expansion when it comes to friends and groups. All right. Um, so that's the Jupiter transits this year, which is like the growth and expansion side of things. The other side of the coin is the Saturn transits, where we have Saturn going through the second half of its transit of Aquarius, which is your ninth house of travel, uh, foreign matters, education, and religion. So Saturn transits can be sort of the opposite of Jupiter transits, and they, they can be more restrictive, and they can indicate a period of consolidation. So a period of consolidation and um, trying to create a more stable foundation, but sometimes by removing certain things in your life or rejecting certain things in your life, or in some instances, Saturn can say no to certain things in your life during this, this point in time. So that may be running into some obstacles or some roadblocks when it comes to your education or when it comes to your ability to travel or um, sort of seek things outside of your own comfort zone or your own culture or what have you. Um, it can also be a period sometimes of testing when it comes to a person's philosophy and uh, religion, where in some instances you can go through a period of more skepticism or rejecting things, or in some instances being rejected from some sort of group in association with that. So one of the things that's often not clear about Saturn transits is in some instances it will bring up a 
surmountable difficulty in this area of your life where you'll have to sort of overcome some obstacle that comes up that gives you a setback, but once you do, it becomes sort of a cliche, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger type scenario. But there's another scenario where you just reach a stop sign and life tells you that you cannot proceed further in this direction when it comes to that topic or that area of your life, in which case you just end up having to pick a new path to go completely. So for you, you've already been experiencing this transit of Saturn through Aquarius for almost two years now. Saturn first dipped into Aquarius in the second quarter of 2020, and then it fully went into Aquarius, I believe, in like December of 2020 of last year. So you've already experienced the first half of this transit and should have a pretty good idea of what topics are coming up uh, when it comes to this transit. So most of it should just be the next, the second half of it and sort of following through and bringing some of that to completion between now and early 2023 when Saturn moves into Pisces and into your 10th house of career. But it's good to just sort of get things in order. And one of the things that might be tricky is that there's going to be um, a bit of an acceleration of this transit around April because Mars is actually going to conjoin Saturn again this year, which it did two years ago at the very start of the transit. Um, but this conjunction will be um, a little bit tense because Mars tends to speed things up, whereas Saturn tends to slow things down. And the end result of that can just be a feeling of, of tension, like you're stuck in the middle of something and you're being pulled in two different directions, so that something eventually has to give. So that feeling of tension is something that you might feel around the time of that um, that conjunction between Mars and Saturn, but it's kind of weird because it's taking place at the same time as that otherwise very lovely, kind of idealistic, but maybe illusory Jupiter-Neptune transit that's also happening in early April. So there's some weird conflicting energies there um, that are going on. Um, at the same time, Saturn is going to be squaring Uranus again with Uranus transiting through your 12th house. And that really comes up in September and October especially, but that's tied in with our next transit, which is the set of eclipses. So maybe it's time to move on to that. So this year you're going to have eclipses bouncing back and forth between Taurus and Scorpio, which are your 12th and 6th houses. So the 12th and 6th houses generally speaking, have to do with uh, physical and mental health and vitality and some of the things that it takes in order to sort of maintain health in those two areas of our life. So when it comes to sixth house transits, sometimes that can mean things like physical vitality and going to the gym and just what it takes in order to um, keep your body in good working condition. So sometimes paying attention to your physical health during this time or taking steps to actually improve it and kind of ward off or avoid future health issues can be a really good thing to do when it comes to physical things like you know going to the doctor and getting a checkup, making sure everything's in good working order. And if it's not, then focusing on doing what you can to fix it. Those are good sixth house themes. When it comes to the 12th house, the 12th house can sometimes have more to do with um, focusing on our mental health and doing sort of the same thing, but doing a sort of internal checkup to see if there's anything that you haven't been addressing where you have issues that are either undermining you or where you're sort of working against yourself in some way that might not be healthy. So sometimes uh, good mental health checkups can be things like, you know, seeing a therapist or going in. Uh, to talk with somebody in order to work out some of your own internal conflicts and internal things that you're still processing as we all do. So the the eclipses taking place between these two signs, my major keywords for eclipses are great beginnings and great endings. So you're going to see some great beginnings and great endings when it comes to these this area of your life as these eclipses bounce back and forth in six-month increments. One of the other topics that sometimes comes up with the sixth house has to do with one's work. And it's kind of interesting how this transit is coinciding a little bit with your Jupiter transit through the 10th house of career. So you may see some major beginnings or endings when it comes to your work 
when you have some of these eclipses in Scorpio a couple of times this year, and things that are happening in terms of starting or ending major jobs during that time, or in other instances, they can just be major developments or new chapters when it comes to a current long-term job that you've had for a while, like moving up or down in a position, or in some instances, if you're in the role of a superior, it can be uh, have starting new relationships or having new people that come in that work um, underneath you in some sort of subordinate role. All right, so that's kind of the eclipses that are bouncing back and forth. There may be some tensions there with Uranus transiting, squaring Saturn in your ninth house of education and philosophy, and some sort of tensions between um, changes in mental health and changes in your overall philosophy of life or your education. Um, but that's probably a little bit too much to get into. And I want to move on to our last transit, which is the Mars retrograde that's going to take place in the third and fourth quarter of this year. So this is really going to begin around August 20th when Mars ingresses into the sign of Aries. And it's going to intensify on October 30th when Mars is going to uh, when Mars ingresses sorry into the sign of Gemini which is your first house and on October 30th Mars is going to turn around and do a U-turn and station in the sky and start moving backwards so Mars going retrograde in your first house your first house has to do with your body uh, and your mind so the first house has to do with um, both physical health as well as mental health, but also a person's appearance and personality and character. So a Mars transit through the first house can sometimes just indicate a period in which you have a greater sense of energy and vitality and just sort of life force that's suddenly um, making you much more energetic and much more focused on getting things done and getting things done quickly because Mars tends to speed things up, and it tends to increase the pace of things very rapidly. Um, but one of the things you want to be careful about during this time is that Mars can sometimes give us too much energy, which can sometimes boil over into um, aggressiveness or impetuousness or impulsiveness or irritability. So it could be a period in which you find yourself being much more irritable and quick to anger uh, compared to other times in your life. And that's something you want to pay attention to and be careful about, because in some instances that could lead to uh, conflict or strife or even um, uh, injuries or accidents if you do something overly impulsive or if you know, you're know you speeding and you drive too fast one day and you get in an accident or something like that. You want to be a little bit careful with Mars energy because that has a tendency to push things a little bit too far and a little bit too fast. So exercising greater caution and moderation during this time would probably be a good piece of advice. And as long as you take that on board, you should be able to navigate that transit relatively constructively um, as long as you're careful. So let's see if there's any other transits that I really meant to touch on here, but I think that actually might be it in terms of those being some of the major themes that I really wanted to touch on and wanted to um, bring to your attention just in terms of specific topics and specific areas of your life that are going to be more active over the course of the next 12 months. All right, that's it for this horoscope forecast for 2022. So as always, this was just a general forecast that focuses on some of the broad outlines of the year ahead. So if you'd like a more detailed analysis of some of the general transits this year, then be sure to check out our year ahead forecast for 2022 that we released in December. Uh, additionally, for a more detailed analysis of your chart, you might want to get a consultation with an astrologer because they can look at it in much more detail than I can go into here in just a general horoscope. Alternatively, or better yet, you could also learn how to read your birth chart and transits on your own which would allow you to pinpoint some of the dates involved with much more precision and exactness. So if you'd like to learn more about my approach to astrology, then you can get a copy of my book titled Hellenistic Astrology, The Study of Fate and Fortune. And in this book, I reconstructed the original system of Western astrology and recovered some techniques that we had lost uh, many centuries ago. 
So with this book, I sort of teach you how to read a birth chart and how to use different timing techniques in order to determine when different things will happen during the course of your life, or in some instances during the course of a single year, as I've attempted to do in this horoscope forecast. So the book is available on Amazon as well as in other fine bookstores everywhere. I also teach an online course on ancient astrology, which has over 100 hours of video lectures. Uh, it shows hundreds of different example charts in order to show you how the different techniques work in practice. And it really gets into details that I couldn't go into as much in my book, even though the book is very big. Uh, in the course, I actually get into a lot more example charts, which really gives you better hands on experience of how to use astrology to read birth charts in practice. So you can find out more information about that at courses.theastrologyschool.com. And finally, I also recently released my 2022 electional astrology report, where I went through the year and I picked out some of the most auspicious or lucky dates uh, with one lucky date or electional chart for each of the next 12 months. So these are useful for starting different types of ventures and undertakings using the principles of electional astrology. The report is also available at courses.theastrologyschool.com. All right, so that, that's it. So thanks for watching. Good luck in 2022, and may the stars be ever in your favor. A special thanks to all the patrons that supported the production of this episode of the podcast through our page on patreon.com. In particular, thanks to the patrons on our producers tier, including Nate Craddock, Thomas Miller, Catherine Conroy, Christy Moe, Ariana Amour, Mandy Ray, Angelique Nambo, Sumo Kopic, Issa Sabah, Jake Otero, Morgan McKinsey, and Kristen Otero. If you like the work that I'm doing here on the podcast and you would like to find a way to support it, then please consider becoming a patron through my page on patreon.com. And in exchange, you'll get access to bonus content such as early access to new episodes, the ability to attend the live recording of the month ahead forecast each month, access to a private monthly auspicious elections report that we put out each month, access to exclusive episodes that are only available for patrons, or you can also get your name listed in the credits at the end of each episode. For more information, go to patreon.com slash astrology podcast. The main software we use here on the podcast to look at astrological charts is called Solar Fire for Windows, which is available at alabe.com, and you can use the promo code AP15 to get a 15% discount. For Mac users, we use a similar set of software by the same programming team called AstroGold for Mac OS, which is available from astrogold.io, and you can use the promo code ASTROPODCAST15 to get a 15% discount on that as well. Also, special thanks to our sponsors, including the Mountain Astrologer magazine, which is available at mountainastrologer.com, the Honeycomb Collective Personal Astrological Almanacs, available at honeycomb.co, and the Astrogold Astrology app, which is available for both iPhone and Android at astrogold.io. There are also two major astrology conferences happening this year. The first is the Northwest Astrological Conference, happening May 26th through the 30th, 2022, near Seattle, Washington. Find out more information at norwac.net. And the second is the International Society for Astrological Research Conference, which is taking place August 25th through the 29th, 2022, in Westminster, Colorado. And you can find out more information about that at isar2022.org.